Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL tutorial on our channel Learn at NoStar. Today we are going to write a SQL query in which we are going to find a value in multiple columns in a table. Let's see how this can be done. So let's assume we have a table which has multiple columns. So we have created a simple table. We have simply called it table one and there are multiple columns in this table. You can see there's column one, column two till column five and all the columns have some data in them. You can see that most of the columns have something like demo schedule, completed demo, completed training. So information related to demo and training. There are also some columns with the value of canceled. So now our requirement is to find or output all records in the table where any of these five columns has the value of cancel so the value cancel can appear in column one it can appear in column two three four or five irrespective of which column it appears in the record should be output so there's a very simple way of achieving this and you do not need to write a cumbersome where clause where you need to go and check where column one is equal to canceled or column two is equal to cancel that can be avoided because there's a very simple syntax in SQL Server that can be followed. So when you are doing a select star from table one, the only thing that you need to do here is where whatever is your search expression. So we are trying to find canceled, canceled, n, and within brackets you have to give all the column names. So column one, column two, column three, column four, and column five. And this simple statement would work to find the value cancelled in all the columns which are mentioned over here. So if I simply go and execute this query, you will see that I get two records in the output because they have the word cancelled in them. So now let's try to change our word which we are trying to find. Let's say we are trying to find the whole string which is like demo plan. So if we are trying to find this, demo plan let's see what is the output that we get we get only one record in which column 5 has a value of demo plan so this actually works and this is a pretty simple and straightforward syntax which can be followed so now the real challenge over here is typing these column names so in actual scenario you might have many many more columns and you would not be wanting to type these column names so in that case the requirement is to dynamically derive the column names of the table now there are a couple of ways in which this can be done there are some system tables which can be used so the object ID of the table can be derived and then you can derive the column names from the object ID. The approach that we are going to take is a more straightforward approach. So we are going to use a table from the information schema and that is a columns table wherein if you pass the table name, you should be able to obtain the column names for that table. So let's see what can be done. If we write a simple select statement like select column name from and the table here is information underscore schema dot columns where table name is equal to your table here. So table one. Now if I execute this query, you will see that I get all the columns so I get five records with all the column names for the table, table one. Now, if I have these records and I can just put this query dynamically instead of writing these column names here, if I can just put this query, I should be able to get the desired results. Let's try to do that and see what is the output. Now I have pasted the query from the information schema table. Now you can see that I've pasted it in the end part of this query. Let's try to execute this query and see if it still works. So you can see that there's no output from this query. So it does not work because it needs the column names in a particular syntax or particular format. So that is not working in this case because it is the column names are being returned as different row values, which obviously this query is not considering. So to make this query work, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the column names in the same format in which we had in our previous query. So basically column names concatenated by a comma so 
In latest versions of SQL Server, this is very simple to do. What we can do is simply go ahead and use the string underscore agg function, which is going to concatenate all the multiple row values into a single column, and you can specify your delimiter. So the delimiter that we are going to specify over here is going to be a comma. Now, if you're not clear with this function, we have done multiple videos on this. And if you have an older version of SQL Server where this function does not work, there are other ways of achieving the same thing. And we have video tutorials on those as well. All the links will be provided in the description. For now, when we use this function, I'm just going to execute the subpart of this query. So you will see that we have got the column names which are separated by a comma. So this is more like the desired format that we have over here and now let's again try to execute this query and see if this will work so i'm going to execute this query and you will see that the output is still null so nothing has been returned which means the query is still not working now why is this query not working is basically what we are getting in the output from the aggregation function is being considered as a single string so what it is doing is it is actually considering this as a single string so when it is making the comparison it is comparing the whole thing as one single string so if you put the commas if you put the quotes over here and try to execute this query nothing is going to happen right so it is the, it is doing the same thing it is considering this whole as a single piece of text and that's why you are not getting any output so this is not going to work still now to make it work we have to take another approach so the same queries but we do not want it to consider that as a single piece of text so we do not want these quotes over here so what we can do here is we can construct a dynamic query and that would make sure that the quotes are not placed and this is not treated as a single piece of text now to consider to construct a dynamic text we need to declare some variables so the first variable that we can declare as is at the aggregated columns that we are going to generate so add call and all the values we are going to declare as anvichar because the arguments which are needed to execute the dynamic sql are needed to be unicode so it's better to specify them as anvichar so i'm just going to specify that as anvichar 100 and then we are going to declare another variable which is our sql query which would be executed and we can define this as you can define it as a big sql query if needed for us for the time being i'm just defining it as 500 characters uh, hopefully that should be enough for us now we are going to set the values of these two variables so i'm going to use the word set at call and the value that we're going to set this to is this particular subquery that we had written over here which is going to provide us the concatenated list of the columns so this is what we're going to set it over here and then we are going to construct our dynamic sql query so we are going to set the at sql as what is a query the first part of the query remains the same so it is we are cancelled in this copy this much part Okay, and you have to concatenate the different parts of this query to make it a dynamic SQL. Again, if you're not clear with how to create a dynamic SQL, we just recently did a video on dynamic SQL. So the link will be provided again in the description below and you can go to that link. So to construct dynamic SQL, you need to join together different parts of the SQL. So all of these subparts will be created or treated as a query, a subtext. So here is the first part then you need to use the concatenation operator which is a plus what are you going to concatenate it is with the values which are returned in the column so that is what we are going to concatenate it with and another thing that you have to observe is that there has to be a bracket over here so the values which are returned by at call are going to be column one two three four con uh, separated by a comma and then again you need to concatenate with the 
closing bracket okay so what are these quotes for let's just see this is your first part of the dynamic sequel the subtext okay whenever you're concatenating two pieces of text or string they have to be within quote so these are the uh, the starting quote and the ending quote for this part of the string and then you have a variable you are concatenating the variable so you're just referencing to the variable using the at call the variable name again a plus for concatenation and this is the last part of the string so again within quotes we need to concatenate with a closing bracket so that is why it is within quotes now since quotes are used to specify the start and end of a string these quotes are confusing for sql server so we need to escape these characters because SQL interprets the quotes as the start and end of a string. Whereas these are part of the string. So to escape a quote, we have to escape it using another quote. So if you have a single quote you want to escape, you just put another quote and that will be escaped. So we escape the starting quote, we have to escape the ending quote. So this is what is going to construct your query. So this is your query which will be constructed and now we have to execute so execute there are multiple ways again two ways to execute it we are going to execute here just using the execute command exec command and that is the execution command execute add sql and this is our command so now again let's execute the whole part starting from the declaration so this is the whole code that we have written make it a little bit so this is the whole code that has been written and I'm just going to execute it and you will see that the correct result will be outputted so both the rows because in the first row column 4 had the string cancel and in the second row column 5 had the string cancel so this will be written so this is how this can be achieved if your requirement is really simple and straightforward wherein you just need to check two or three or four or five columns then you can easily go and just type the names and it is a very simple syntax and can be very easily implemented if it is more complex in terms of dynamic then you have to follow this approach also one limitation with what we have done today is that it's a complete match of the word so it is not a wildcard match it is not like a like so we are not saying that if you cannot uh, match if there's anything else with the cancel and you want to just find part of the string matches you would not be able to do that because it is not like a like so you cannot use person and person sign over here it would not work if you want to do that then it would be still a very complicated piece of code so this is for a simple requirement but this is an interesting one because many people are not aware of this so i hope that this video was useful if it was then please do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and also please like comment and share this video thanks a lot for watching goodbye